part of the broadcast. Hmm. Familiar choice. Early shops, almost no matter what we do. Hmm. Slime boss at the end of the act. Could definitely get behind the boss swap this time. Yeah, really late burning elite should be easy to take out, so although we might want to go for the two elites over here, it's probably better to do something like this. Early elite here could be a problem. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the boss swap. Sozu! It's gonna be a tough run. Okay. Sozu gives us an extra energy every turn. But we can't get potions anymore. That extra energy is pretty good, but the lack of potions is going to be particularly brutal. Already costing us five max health. Unfortunately, this is a skip for the first card. Two energy generating cards when we already have an energy relic. No, thank you. Recursion with no starting orb. Also, no, thank you. Skip. This might be a very short run. Pretty much have to take a Sweeping Beam. It's our first area damage card. Draws a card, and when we have four energy per turn, helps with the Slime Boss. I don't think Loop or, again, Recursion are going to be very high impact. Gold and we did double sweeping beam with busted crown. Now let's do double sweeping beam with Sozu. Could also take boot sequence for the block on turn one, but turn one block isn't that useful in act one, problematically. What does the shop offer me? Better cards? Card removal? Not getting into another fight. Not like I can get a potion or anything. show up. <laughs> Self-repair can definitely help with the Sozu problem. Let's pick that up. Letting us heal ourselves seven at the end of each combat can really help sustain yourself through a larger number of fights. <laughs> Don't think I'll be taking a compile driver. I'm not sure I'm allowed to fight this elite, unfortunately. I guess we'll see what we get from here. Hand agreed would have been really nice from that shop, but alas, it's out of our price range. Right into the voids, we are using a number of cosmetic slash visual mods here on the stream. Exclamation point mods has the breakdown, but basically uh, use a mod called Slay the Relics so that you can mouse over the stream on desktop PC and see a description of relics. We also use relic stats, so relics keep track of, yeah, it's going to be a very short run, how many times they've done their respective thing. And these card rewards. I only beat the sentries. And even then, not by much. So do I start a new run now or later? Let's go with later. Do I generally value boss swap over random common relic? Depends on the character. I think it's a lot... Uh, the common relic is better on silent in particular. 
So there is a bit of uh, variance there. Take the auto shields? Or the bullseye? I'll take the auto shields. Need 11 block if we have none. Pretty good here, for example. Hi. Give me your gold. And your hit points. Struck first there. He's getting away, though, with our money. Not much I can do about that. Simply haven't seen any sufficiently damaging cards here. But buffer's pretty good. Prevent the next time we would lose health or the next two times if upgraded. Recycle, not so useful now. Could be useful later. Or cold snap for an orb. I think it's gotta be buffered though. Such a good early game. Power for the defects. Here we go. Probably better to take a cool headed first over a defragment. I do like cool headed. That's our first orb. And with the bonus energy, we do want more card draw. Card draw that we can eventually upgrade even better. Hello World gives us pretty valuable card draw, actually, generating random common cards for us to play. It's not bad. I do think I like the cool-headed more. How much do we need to survive Slime Boss? Not a whole lot, honestly. I think we'll be in pretty good position, especially if I take either cool-headed or Hello World here. Let's give Hello World a try. Let's see what it does for us. Oh! Incense Burner is pretty powerful, making us intangible every six turns, and the Gremlin might give us a hologram or a bullseye here. Show me some cards. Yeah, give me a hologram. Sweet. Don't want to zap. And this is regret. So, do I fight this elite? Knob would be a hard time. Legavillain's actually not bad now. Sentry should be relatively easy. We definitely have no answer to Knob, though. Buffer is absolutely top of the list for upgrades. Could just avoid elites entirely. Feels pretty bad not to get any relics. I'll take one elite. It's not a gremlin knob. Good. We should be able to win this fight. And defend. Get this orb down. Hello world is going to be the kind of the carry here. That and sweeping beams. Leave buffer for later. Yeah. Cold snap, hollow, cold snap, defend, or without our shields. Cold snap from Hello World, by the way. Guarantee that I don't take anything.
Get him, hello world. Get him. Hmm. Don't think we ever get to fight the Burning Elite. Even if Incense Burner's on the right number. Oh, also... <laughs> can't set up Burner if this happens. We'll take four. Happy Flower for more energy, and I think we want a... Uh, a cool-headed now. Not a claw. Never a claw. Jeez. These have been some tough combats we've gotten into. Uh, let's actually play this. Thanks, Incense Burner. You did it. pretty good. FTL rebound to turbo. FTL's a bit worse with these sweeping beams, as we may draw into it. Same with cool-headed. Rebound's okay. Honestly, I think we should just start skipping. Rebound's okay. I have so many draw one effects, I'll take one rebound, actually. Putting a card back on top can be really helpful. Don't think we want to try to fight the Burning Elite. I think we should upgrade our buffer, upgrade one of the sweeping beams, and try to kill Slime Boss that way. I think that's our best bet here. Boop. That had a lot of cards in Act 1. Maybe a few too many. Several of them are good, at least. So, for example, here I can rebound Steam Barrier. Or I can just use the buffer. We want to kill on this turn to make us intangible for Slime Boss's Crush. Hologram, go for the eyes. Reinforced Body it looks pretty good. Definitely don't mind a reinforce for the later game. Second hologram is also reasonable, but two unupgraded holograms is a bit of a bit of a debt. Might actually have too much block to want uh, reinforce here. We have a steam barrier and an auto shields already. This is one of the more scalable block cards, though. I'm gonna take it. Might regret that. And I am going to upgrade Sweeping Beam. Alright, for this fight... We're not going to split in three turns, but we can avoid getting crushed on by the Incense Burner, thankfully. And the Hello World's going to help us generate a ton of cards. That are all very good. Just go zap. Boop. Hmm.
88 minus 13 is exactly 75. So playing ball lightning does split the slime boss. In that case, I'll go slime strike. Good. Um, yeah, just streamline and two slime. I'm not going to play sweeping beam here. I want to avoid redrawing some of these. Not too many. Too many, I tell you. Hologram the beam plus. Rebound the beam plus. Could have also done that with streamline too. Hit the one making us weak. So note how many times we got to play just this one upgraded sweeping beam in a row because of our manipulation effects. GG. We're out of Act 1. Not that bad, actually. Did get our one elite. And now we have Core Surge, Fission, or Reboot. Definitely don't mind adding a core surge to the deck. Reboot could also be helpful as a sort of calculated gamble style effect. Don't see a lot of use for fission as we don't have very many orbs. So it's either core surge, reboot, or skip. I'm thinking core surge personally. A lot of good uses for core surge down the road. I'm also very strongly considering Pandora's box. Transform all strike and defend cards. It'll turn our starter cards into something way better. Since we already have very good energy generation from our relics, the Pandora's box is going to remove all of the most useless cards and make this deck a lot more consistent, probably. Well, a lot more effective on average. What exactly will we get? Let's find out. Amplify double force field. All for one. Interesting. Need some powers. We've got buffer. Actually, we've got three powers. Oh, man. Yes. I heard you like powers, chat. Got the reboot after all. This is cool. Very cool. We do need to remove one or two cards, upgrade one or two cards before it's really good. But I see a lot of potential here. I see a lot of potential here. Um, might need a bag of preparation. Let's see. I like this path. Get a removal here. Maybe fight the elite or maybe don't. Up to us. Fight this elite. Maybe second shop or maybe another elite. Parley, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome to the QZ sub club. Could also go this way. Avoid the shop. But I think we have enough money that a shop is a good idea. Amplify the buffer. The power. My buffers, no! Oh, cheese. Terrifying. Good. Forty two. Really blocking twenty two. Well, that wasn't so bad. And bonus points, we got a barrage here. 
from the thingy. Hmm, how do I play this? Block plus 12. 19, take five more, so I'll only be missing one hit point if I do this line. I'm cool with that. Could have also knocked one or two birds out of the air that turn. But I wanted to get the doubled self repair in play. by one. We go to 70 out of 71 health. Three unupgraded cards. Don't seem that appealing now that we have uh, no more starter cards. We'd really like to improve the deck's upgrade dense. Oh. Well, that would make that pretty easy to do. Other decent options here. Ori lets us look at a bunch of cards. We could go cool headed plus defragment. That's pretty good. Especially with Amplify. We could go preserved insect to make the elite easier. Not very interested in claw, actually, despite the all for one. All for one's purpose is to get back our force fields. Pretty good deep breath, actually. But I think this Apotheosis is going to serve us so well. Upgrading all of these non-starter cards. Let's do it. Upgrades the self-repair, upgrades the amplify. A lot of really good upgrades. Is this just boot sequence force field? Hello world boot sequence force field. Yes, it is. Now, as for doing damage, we're actually not very good at that. Why bonk when you can blonk? This might be our last fight before the Elite, so... I'm gonna wait till Incense is on five. Although, uh, Intangibility turn 2 could be really good for Grum Leader. It's all good. Wait, I did that wrong. Why did I think that was... a uh, heck. Hmm. Don't worry, we'll get a combat in the question mark room. Yeah. 
Yeah, slightly embarrassing. Scrape could be oddly good here, actually. Hmm. It's like almost okay. I have enough block, I don't really want an equilibrium. Skip those both. Yeah, definitely goofed my my thingy there. Hmm. What if I don't care about these anymore, though? Because now we have Apotheosis. We no longer need to upgrade all the cards in the deck. Go this way. Might have put me a lot further away from what I needed, though, unfortunately. Here we go. So close. Okay, now if we can win on this turn, that'd be great. Doesn't look like it will happen, though. I like a machine learning a lot. It's a power, and it draws us cards. Need I say more? I might need to say more. Makes the force field cheaper. We can amplify it. And it's going to let us all for one, even harder, essentially. And I'm going to upgrade the reboot. So that we can use it to find Apotheosis a little bit more easily. Okay, I'm going to head towards this elite. Let's see how this goes. Could think about removing dual cast next. Rebound hologram. Hologram rebound. Sweeping beam. Rebound hologram. Sweeping beam. Hologram. Steam barrier. It's a weird turn. Really great example of why rebound is good. And why hologram is good, because you can do strange things under the right circumstances. Double. Hello world. Hello worlder. Now we want to have incense set to five correctly this time. Huh. 
Oh, I like that idea, Crazy Yahoo. Uh, if you've seen the game Grifflands, another deck building roguelite, in that game, anytime you upgrade a card, you get two different choices for what the upgrade is. And I, thought, I always thought that was a really cool system to make the cards feel differentiated and flexible. All right, so we kill next turn. That's the goal. And in across the obelisk. Ah! I've heard tale of the across the obelisk. Cool. Actually, Streamline Plus is kind of the damage we've been looking for. Deal 20 gets cheaper every time it's played. After being played two times, it's free and can now be returned to our hand by the All for One. I actually like it quite a lot. Good buffer target. Or I can just do this. Rebound, force field, cool headed, force field. Save that reboot for later. Um, interesting. These are one cost. Let's just go one time. Self repair. Force surge, all for one. Force field, force field. Sixteen block. Hologram hits force field. Makes that nice and cheap. Would like to be able to play the streamline here, but I don't feel like I realistically can. That's worrisome. If I dual cast, I can streamline, actually. And next turn we have aggregate reinforce body. Nine energy. Okay, here we go. Rebound. Streamline. Sweeping beam. Streamline. Streamline carrying this fight. GG, Book of Stepping. Perfect fight. And now we have a mummified hand. When we play a power card, a random card becomes free, given that the deck has five powers and an amplify. That's actually pretty good. An upgraded algorithm will scale very quickly, allowing us to become allowing it to become a massive one-time block card. Another good option here, take another hologram. Relevant Feather, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the QZ sub club. Deck slash board building game. That's kind of interesting, like Yukaracha. Oryx, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. It's a really good hologram, is the thing. And I have already very good blocking engine, so let's let's take the hologram over the algorithm here. Especially with Apotheosis, I don't actually care about the upgrade loss that much. I'm genuinely about to consider skipping gold-plated cables. That's absurd. Gold-plated cables is essentially one more orb. Although, given how heavily, how easily this could turn into a frost focus deck, I'm not sure I agree. No, let's pick it up. This could be useful later. Worst case scenario, it's it's occasionally going to do something here too. How's it going, the real Jack Laycock? Hello, hello. Draw six. Streamline. And streamline again. Although, 
Let's see if I can set up... Burner. A little bit more satisfactorily here. Since on four might have to do. Let's see what this draws. I'm healing ten, actually, so I can block for four plus three plus three. Yeah, we're fine here. We do have boot sequence on turn one, and again, we might not actually want. Burner on five for Gremlin Leader. So let's let's kill now. Don't want these. Not even turbo, now that we have the mummy hand. Maybe a cold snap? No, we'd rather have more cool headeds. It is Gremlin Leader, and we are not getting attacked on turn one. Okay. I think I'll leave one gremlin alive on purpose. The angry gremlin. Fair enough. And then if the leader attacks us next turn, we're just going to be intangible for that. If they don't attack us next turn, good. They do. And we get off scot-free. Beautiful. Need to block four to not lose any buffers, though. Or I can do this. Double them. Double hello world, double machine learning. Nine cards per turn. Bring them. So many beams. Get a second chance at life, the lizard tail. We're offered asunder, but I don't think that I care. I'm gonna recall it this fire. Yeah, lizard tail is such a huge pickup with Sozu, saving us from a yikes situation. Potentially. And that might be the heart. That might be the yikes. I don't know why I hit the middle one there. I just wanted to. Tangible next turn, losing the buffer's not too bad here. I guess rebounding, it's not that important if I'm gonna play the reboot. Guess I won't play the reboot then. If 
I can stall a little bit here. Six damage. If only it wasn't upgraded. Like seven, so we block nineteen. Take exactly seven damage. Okay. Thinking about slavers specifically. I want a melter. Nah. I've ever lost a battle where I had both a lizard tail and a fairy. Hmm. Probably. I think I've had something like that happen. Yeah, I'm gonna go with probably. played the self-repair there, not the buffer. Yeah, I definitely should have. Hm. Amp the hello world. Seems fine. Hello, Streamline. We've done that. Man, this deck can block so well. Gurya, actually excellent. Actually insanely excellent. Why? Because with one, we have the red key already, and two, with Apotheosis, we don't really have a whole lot of use for um, stuff at rest sites. So being able to gain permanent strength at rest sites is beautiful. And we will definitely lift three times during the rest of this run to make this the beefiest, strongest defect of all time. Hello there. Well, let's do buffer turn one. Seems fine. Hurts to lose those holograms like that. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, exhausted them. But I actually like making the deck smaller for this fight. Amplify is already in the discard file. There we go. Don't think I'll be playing Hello World in this fight either. She learns in play. Okay. Now, we're definitely doing damage kind of slowly at this point. Let's go. 
So our strategy in this fight is damage with uh, all for one and streamline. I may play Hello World when the Execute arrives. We'd also like to set up Instance Burner with the Execute, if possible. Which means stalling for a little bit at this time. Could also be intangible for the second Execute, because we have buffer for the first one. That would mean bringing Champ below half health now. Exactly half is not less than half. Can't do that. Okay. I'll be back. So not playing this because I do not want to bring Champ below half health on this turn. I want to bring him below half health when Incense Burner says four. So next turn. So now I think we do play the Hello World. So here, we bring him below half health now. He spends this turn buffing up. Invincible on this turn. Boop. Now we have two streamlines that are coming back into our hand. Pretty hype. Guess I don't need the buffer charges, huh? Poor guy. GG. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I actually thought I was going to have a little bit of a hard time when I destroyed the two holograms, but that worked out perfectly. It's going to be very hard to convince me not to take Seek here, although I could get behind a second copy of Machine Learning. Seek is going to help us find our Apotheosis early and do some beautiful stuff with that. Seek also lets us find Amplify in conjunction with a Power. And that can be really, really good. What is stealing my potions? This, our starting relic of this run, giving us an energy every turn, but saying you can no longer obtain any potions. Led to us having a fairly tough Act 1. But now that we're here in the mid to late game, we're doing just fine. Hmm, very tempted to do Dunk, Zap, and Dual Cast with the Empty Cage here. Remove two cards from the deck. Shrink this down to a more reasonable subset. The Zap and the Dual Cast really aren't contributing any meaningful damage at this point. Attacks are going to do better as we gain strength. Could transform and upgrade cards, but we've already gotten rid of all the basic stuff, so how good are random cards really going to be? This is an odd case of where I actually like the Empty Cage more than I like the Astrolabe, because we already have all of the pieces to a winning deck, we just need to consolidate. Culling Bell's not unreasonable. Three additional relics would be a very helpful boon for us here. Although that unremovable curse is a bit of a problem. I think I am just going to dunk two cards. Zap and dual cast. Get rid of our last starters here. And let the gold-plated cables simply work with the cool-headeds. The one cool-headed, the one cool-headed. Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. And draw our apotheosis more consistently by virtue of having fewer cards. Gotta grab the green key, you. Path is chosen for us, then. And we're fighting Awakened One, so... Uh, yeah. 
Conveniently, we get the exact correct number of rest sites. Two lifts and a... Uh... Actually, just two lifts. Two buffers, you're dead, sir. Bit annoying, but I'm going to wait for the incense burner here to come back to a reasonable number. Program is here. And so is Go for the Eyes Plus, and they're both very good. Reprogram allows us to gain strength and dexterity. Making our blocks block for more, making our attacks hit for more. Go for the Eyes weakens opponents for a while. I think we should take this reprogram. Fusion's also pretty good. For similar reasons. Let's grab the reprogram first. A program redemption arc. This fight is why I wanted to set up Incense Burner. Exactly this reason. Very happy we set up that Incense Burner. Stinky Darklings. Just make your life hack if they want to. energy is okay. Not good enough. Champ went to tangible the turn you use execute, so you have to block champs execute to win the fight. That'd be pretty tough. That'd be very, very difficult. Does not kill, huh? Well, that's what our healing is for. It's a centennial puzzle, I feel like. easily set up incense burner with four buffers. So 
do I want it on one? Give me intangibility on turn two, actually. Now a beam cell seems good. Doesn't do us any good. Take Turbo or Blizzard? I don't think so. Four shapes. When three is not enough, try four. But again, we can just kill it when we're intangible. That part's easy enough. Uh, but I do want to set up in the correct... Whoops. I do want to set up the correct uh, incense burner for our elite. Gonna be incense on four because of Reptomancer. Reptomancer is the only one I'm concerned about. I can easily beat Giant Head or Nemesis with any incense burner value, but Repto is the biggest threat. Don't need another one of these, do I? No, not with two force fields. Lift. It is Reptomancer. And boy, am I happy to see her because it means I've prepared appropriately. These two daggers will KO themselves next turn. She'll summon two more daggers. We'll be attacked for about 100 damage, except it's only going to be 7 damage or so. Convenient. Not a problem. So, quite a lifesaver, huh? Bound, I've got Hologram, I've got Seek, and I've got Reboot. Talk about card manipulation. I can essentially play any cards that I want from anywhere in my deck in whatever order I want with this combination of cards. That's pretty cool. I'm going to use the Sweeping Beams to kill the minions. Forced, giving me... I could have hologrammed Aggregate, actually. Turbo. 
So we'll do 13. The next one will do even more. Uh, I can just all for one to get that back? Kind of weird. Do it. Keep drawing cards. Good. All for one again. Turbo reinforced. Well, I would say that Repto fight went pretty swimmingly, and that means our Burning Elite is not a Reptomancer. Good. Plus one Dexterity? And a Skim for card draw. Yeah. Give me a Skim. And keep lifting. And take the Sapphire Key. Ornamental fan probably would have been a little bit better than the cables, I suppose. It's all right. It is time. Machine learning. Or program, I guess. into aggregate, generate some energy here. Down streamline. Any more stuff. Gambling chip, letting us discard cards on turn one to draw more cards. Excellent. Claw, unfortunately, not helpful here. That was actually part of the problem with the last run, was not the programmer or any other part of it beyond the actual claws. If you're scaling your strength, you don't need the actual claw. We don't. Claw plus I will refuse. Oof. Cute. More holograms. Basically no limit to the number of holograms this deck wants. Especially if they come pre-upgraded. 
fetching a card from the discard pile and blocking at the same time when we're scaling our block. Beautiful. Almost interested in losing self-repair, I'll lose one of the sweeping beams instead. Now that we have the streamline. Mostly using the other stuff. Writhing Mask could give us a curse. Their big swirling debuff is the move that does so. But we can always change their intent by attacking them. For better or worse. This one. If this attack goes off, we get a curse. So our main goal is to not do that. Probably do want to get rid of this. Hello world now. Handle that. Take another buffer, unupgraded. Not too afraid of the awakened one, truthfully. I have mummy hand, let's do it. Block the debuff here. Fine. Let me turn down one of these. I could take a chaos to try to get a plasma orb. That seems needless here. Just keep skipping. I think we have the deck that we need for the late game. All we have to do is be able to play... Reprogram early, and the Seek helps with that. That's the other thing this run has that the previous run didn't, is Seek, and better yet, Gambling Chip, to help me find the Apotheosis and the Reprogram early as possible. Probably not gonna be amplified. well, actually. You know, Ant Machine Learning sounds really good. TBH. Draw me more cards. Don't... Double buffer seems suicide, though. Let's not do that yet. Perfect. Aggregate, hologram, aggregate, seek for, hologram and rebound, rebound, hologram, getting back reprogram, play reprogram, play sweeping beam, play hologram. Getting back boot sequence. kill you. 
Is Hello World a curse now? Yes. I believe it has achieved curse level. Well, at least in this fight. Probably in next fight, too. I might remove it at the Act 4 shop. Uh, let's do this. Question mark. Yes. 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 Okay. Five. Perfect. Twenty-eight, right? Twenty-six. Perfect. So let's just hold over program again. Now with eleven strength, thirteen dexterity, we're really in the business. Take some damage here. Because of this relatively unfortunate draw order. Nothing we can't uh, self repair back, though. Play the Hello World. Scaling beyond all reason. Do it. And intangible turn one sounds good for next fight. Cool. We are through the Awakened One. Now we face the Time Eater. I am, in fact, happy that we have intangibility here. Don't give me drawdown. Thanks. Ah, uh, company. my hand next turn? Actually, that's not bad. Because I can seek and then amplify both buffers. Okay. Eight buffer stacks, please. Maybe you don't even need the aggregate. Now we wait. 
Foolish, foolish. Unfortunately, for the Time Eater, we've gained strength faster than they have. Now that just won't do. I'd like Incense Burner to be on four, if possible. kill on this turn. Alright, see you in six turns, Time Eater. Makes sense. Those don't actually make block. My buffers. Any attack or card draw. Good. GG. We still have full health after all. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this uh, the heart of the spire, the source of this focusless defect being surprisingly effective? One last upgrade. I guess we'll upgrade this buffer just in case we draw it before Apotheosis. Don't think it matters much though. Oh my. We have some spicy choices here. Orange pellets, the power attack and skill are played in the same turn, remove all our debuffs. That'd be really good with his speed potion, except I can't buy the speed potion, so that's not that good. Centennial Puzzle's nice for card draw. If nothing else, the Orange Pellets can remove uh, the Heart's Vulnerable, Frail, and Weak debuff, and that's pretty good. So I'll take that. Yes, please. I'll take another copy of Seek, I imagine. Anything I'd like to remove. Self... Uh, Hello World. Let's go to Hello World. Take that out over Cool-Headed. And I can afford either Seek or Puzzle or Master of Strategy. Goodbye, world. Orange, Orange Pellets will remove the debuff from Reprogram, meaning our Frost Orbs can block for a little bit. But as we continue to play Reprogram, we'll still accumulate negative focus. Good Instincts is okay. Six block for zero energy. Not better than uh, Force Fields, though. Force fields are the main block engine. 
think I want Centennial Puzzle. <laughs> That'll do. No chaos, no rebound, no self-repair. I'd buy potions if I could. I'd buy speed potion, liquid bronze, maybe. But I can't, because of our Suzu start. I just can't. Hmm, that is an awkward beginning to things. Keep this for now. Okay. We're intangible on the second turn, so what would be 65 damage turns into basically nothing. Good. Now I have four buffers, so I could stop this entire turn based just on buffers. Hollow skin? Hollow skin. It's a rather embarrassing series of draws, unfortunately. Yeah, none of this actually makes a difference. Nothing in the draw pile sure makes Seek pretty bad, actually. Hmm. Unfortunate. We'll just reboot. Okay, we have to get the streamline played. Okay, this is really easy. Rebound! All for one. All for one gets back. Force field, force field. Oh, I can't play it again. Hmm. I could. Shoot. It's not quite how I wanted that to go, but we're still fine. Hologram streamline, hologram all for one. One, 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 two. Yes, hologram. Streamline, hologram all for one. Still haven't used Puzzle here. Pretty good sign. Now we just want to set up Incense Burner for the heart. We want it to be on either three or four. I think. Might be difficult to get the exact number we want because the huge block the Spire Shield generates. Good. 
get one more energy on turn one, and a second reprogram, an all for one, or a loop. I think second reprogram is gonna seal the deal here and really let us outscale the heart very, very easily. Let's take it. Brings us to an even 30 cards, two reprograms, three holograms. All for one, force fields, good stuff. I think we're in very, very good shape here. I want the bonus draw next turn. I'm not going to destroy this hologram. Let's just do this. I'm intangible. Draw me some cards. Hmm. Forget this for program. Destroy core surge, make streamline cheaper. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Gotta do power attack skill in order to purge the debuff here, which we can do. Problem is, uh, we're gonna lose those buffers. I'll keep one, but I'll use the other one to clear the vulnerable this turn. So, Apotheosis, buffer, force field rebound. I guess that should have been rebound force field, then I wouldn't have been frail. Saved a couple more hit points, but I would have rebounded the force field, which I didn't want to do. So, yeah. Get with this, play this. I don't want to draw this next turn, although I have plus one draw, so it's a perfect time to draw seek. Okay, I do want to draw that next turn. Good. I'll do it this way. I'll look at one more card first, I suppose. Vaguely alarming, but it really isn't. Rebound all for one is perfect. Do take some damage here. You know, we perfectly blocked with our three remaining buffers. Cute. We're intangible next turn. That looks pretty promising. I should hold it reprogram first. Don't think it matters. Still have a lizard tail, too. Spooky looking turn, perhaps, but fear not, we have so much dexterity. It's really not that bad. B 
Speed of death is three. There is string line and such in there. So hologramming the all for one can give us a lot of block. Also gives us Play this first. This works. Finally getting good use of that reboot. Now we just want to go for the kill here. Eight by 15, more like your dead son, GG. Mr. Hart. GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.